Uh, mm -hmm. charity. So can you tell us about what that is and what made you want to start this project? Definitely. Yeah. So today my full-time job every day, Monday through Sunday, is with a company called Generous International. And Generous International is best known for our coffee. So Generous Coffee Company is under the umbrella of Generous International. We source from nine different countries, uh, all specialty coffee, so of the highest grade. We sell this coffee here in the States and then donate to profits back to causes that are fighting some type of injustice that has affect humans. Um, Generous was founded, really why it started was I was on the board of a nonprofit who was doing community dis um, development in Latin America. And what we found was that fundraising is difficult and it's not sustainable and that the model of a nonprofit is hard to strategically plan for the future. So we started a for-profit company, um, we call it For Purpose, uh, in Generous, so that we could sell products. Uh, we now have t-shirts, these are made out of plastic bottles, they're made by uh, single mothers and orphans in Haiti um, who are paid 15 bucks an hour uh, plus retirement um, and, and full benefits and an air conditioning facility. Uh, we supply jewelry that's made in Honduras um, by women uh, so we can supply, supply them jobs, obviously sell our coffee, and then we donate the profits of this back to nonprofits uh, that are operating in that same arena. Um, so we want Generous to be a funding source for these nonprofits so they can strategically plan for the future and become more efficient. Uh, you know, one of the things with Generous is it's a community of people really that's connecting over one common purpose, which is to hopefully do something good in the world. So as I look at Generous, and, and, and my hope is that it's led like with our hands wide open. So it's led by people that are participating and volunteering and purchasing. Uh, the hero is really the customer. Um, long term, in, in 10 years, what I would love for Generous to be is a recognizable brand that people purchase Generous products because they know that it's been vetted, that there's a story behind it, and that it is of the highest quality. So the cool part right now, part right now is if you want good coffee, and the world right now loves good coffee, loves high quality coffee, um, you know by going to Generous that it's all specialty coffee. So if you want some of the best coffee in the world, just buy Generous coffee. It's not only the best co quality coffee, but it's also giving back to something even better. And then you went on Winter Games, I guess, mm -hmm. a couple months ago, and you talked about like you're kind of struggling with dating. Um, how are you doing now with that? Yeah, Winter Games, just like every other Bachelor show that you participate in, um, it sets you up to be to know yourself better than you ever did before. I think one of the best parts about this franchise, um, and there's a lot of things that you can crit critique and a lot of things that aren't so positive about it, but one of the best things is it allows you to talk about yourself all the time. That's what they want to hear. You know, They want you to talk about yourself. They want you to talk about love and relationships and where you're at in life. And so Winter Games opened me up to that. I, I spent uh, many days just talking through my, my issues and my insecurities. And it really kind of launched me into the world post Winter Games that I was more prepared to date, uh, more prepared to go confidently on dates with, with women and get to know them and, and invest in them where before maybe I was pushing them away. You know, going on dates and saying, yeah, I'm not interested, I'm not ready. Uh, Winter Games kind of gave me that next confident step out to say, I've processed through, I do desire a relationship. Uh, and, and I am ready to meet somebody. And so that's what I've been trying to do. Ever since Winter Games, I've been trying to get out there in the world, to date, to invest in people, um, and to invest in relationships. And it's led me to a really good place. I feel really excited and happy that I'm now confidently dating again. Uh, I hadn't dated for three years um, up until now. You know, you, you, I did The Bachelorette, and then I was one of, the, like, I tried, I, I don't know, I'm not really a rule follower, ever. But I followed the rules after Bachelorette and didn't date in between The Bachelorette and Bachelor. And then went on The Bachelor and then met Lauren and we were engaged for 18 months. And that was three years of my life that I didn't date outside of The Bachelor franchise. And so for me to get back into that world was confusing and weird. But I'd say now that I, I maybe have my mojo back. Really? I hope so. That's possibly. Awesome. So I guess like what was like the switch for you, I guess, on Winter Games where mm. you figured that out? One of the hardest part about Winter Games to me was, actually it was brought up by one of my favorite people in the world, my co-host on the podcast, Ashley Kennedy, and she brought up to my attention, like, do you, she asked me if maybe I wasn't entering back into relationships confidently because I knew that if those relationships were to end, that I wasn't ready to recover from the breakup. Um, you know, with Lauren, uh, we had a really serious, great relationship, but I was in a healthy enough place in life where when the breakup happened, it still hurt and it was still hard. And even though it still at times paralyzed me, I was able to recover because I was doing so well in life and that I had the confidence still um, to the person I was. But it still took a piece away from me, right? It still, it still pulled at my heart a little bit. 
So going on Winter Games kind of opened my eyes to the fact that I was scared that if I were to get into another serious relationship and that relationship were to end, I, you know, subconsciously, I, I know this, I didn't believe that I could recover properly, that I would, it would have broke me. And I wasn't at a place in life with generous going on and the podcast and, and my friendships and relationships. I wasn't ready to, I, I could not uh, sacrifice my own emotional well-being um, for a relationship at that point. Um, and I know Dean just went through a breakup and you guys are pretty mm -hmm. good friends. Did you have any advice for him after his breakup? Breakups are hard. I don't know if there's any great advice for breakups. Um, I think one of the best parts about breakups or, or grief or pain is that we can all learn from them. Um, and I think that's my advice to Dean right now. And we, when we just talked this week would be to, you know, no matter whose fault it is or why the relationship ended, we don't know that typically in breakups and sometimes not even the two people existing within the relationship know what happened. Um, but at least to look inward for a little bit, figure out where you maybe fell short, where your mistakes were, where you were a little selfish or you were a little too sensitive and, or, or maybe you, you weren't communicating clearly enough um, and dig deep so you can be better for the next one. Uh, one of the best parts about grief is that you can learn from those situations um, and, and become better for any next you know, chapter in life. So for Dean uh, or Leslie or whoever it is, it would just be take some time now to, to relax, to process, and to understand that, you know, this next relationship, hopefully you're even a better person because of the last one. Mm -hmm. And then speaking of breakups, do you still keep in contact with any of your exes? Uh, I do. I think one of the best parts about uh, my relationships in my life is I've dated a lot of people that I really still care about. And that when the relationship ended, even it was hard, and, you know, for example, my college uh, girlfriend, you know, she was somebody that I was so close with, that I loved dearly, and when we broke up, we didn't talk uh, for years. Uh, and then, you know, over that time, we built a friendship where we could communicate more openly and, and honestly. And she actually became friends with some of my best friends um, even before we started talking again. But in every relationship that I've had and in every serious relationship, I have good relationships with people post-fact. Um, you know, Lauren and I don't talk a ton. She's in a relationship. It would be weird if we did, I think. But if she ever needed anything and I would think that she would feel the same way about me, uh, she would be there. Um, you know, that we have something where we, we shared so much life together that it's impossible to pull that apart. Right. Uh, well, that's nice to hear. Do you still keep in contact with, like, JoJo or Caitlin? Mm. Um, you know, I, I talked to Sean um, a little bit. Uh, I really love Sean and Caitlin. Uh, they're great people. And unfortunately, life has, has not allowed us to be as close as maybe we were all hoping to be. Um, but they are two tremendous people. And they're... Uh, have been great to me and they've been great through my experience entering into the bachelor and post bachelor. Um, I don't talk to Jojo. Um, I think, you know, I've met Jordan and I've met, you know, seen them together. And I guess I hope what they know now is that I support the relationship fully and that I'm excited for him. And, um, I've, you know, I would love to have a friendship with Jordan, but again, I think it would be weird if I had a friendship with Jojo. I don't, mm -hmm. I think those boundaries don't have to be crossed anymore. Um, it's not respectful for anybody. It's just odd. Um, but, you know, again, JoJo and Caitlin are both women that I would, I look up to, um, that I, you know, see on social media. And I'm like, those are just two awesome women that I get to share life with. Like, I'm pretty lucky for that. Um, and then would you ever go back on like another Bachelor mm. show, like Bachelor in Paradise or something else? Uh, the question always is asked to me if I would ever do anything again. And it's so hard to say. I, I remember coming off the Bachelor and I was like, I'm done. Laura and I are celebrating and we're just going to run off into the sunset and be so happy. And then life changes a bit. And you see that new opportunities present themselves and new avenues present themselves. And you see yourself entering into things that you never thought you'd ever do before. And so it would be impossible for me. And I'd be lying to you, honestly, if I sat up here and said I would never do anything on the Bachelor franchise again. Um, for example, Winter Games. That came out of nowhere. It was a concept that I was like, this is an awesome idea. I could just spend weeks in a house with people from all over the world, you know, co competing in these winter sports in a beautiful place. And, and, that's going to be my life for a while. So I said yes to it. I never knew it existed. It, it didn't exist till last year. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what kind of crazy ideas the bachelor world has up their sleeve. Um, so I don't want to close off to anything. But um, I also know that at some point in my life, um, going on these shows won't be the healthiest thing for me. And I hope at some point, because it's, you know, the bachelor is typically doing dating shows, I hope to not have to go on these shows anymore. Like I hope <laughs> to be in a relationship where I'm no longer an option.